Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. This is what the sixth Sunday of uh, Epiphany. Yes, it is. Epiphany. Uh, yeah. Epiphany. Yep. We are. With an M, right? It sounds like. But Doug, with an M. Say yeah. Epiphany with an M, but I think it's. Do you know what when you say Epiphany? It sounds like Epiphany. I I think it's like the almonds almonds thing. It's a you know some. <laughs> <laughs> Some people like epiphany. So, but no, it's epiphany. Yeah, with an end. Oh. This is uh, this is what I refer to as a bridge uh, season in in the liturgical calendar. It it bridges Christmas to Easter, and uh, oh. yeah. uh, just as uh, uh, the one after Easter. My mind is, is failing me. Are we going into, that's not Pentecost, um, is it? Yeah, Pentecost. Pentecost, Pentecost, yes. is, Pentecost is a bridge uh, season. It bridges uh, Easter to Christmas. Mm -hmm. And Easter and Christmas are the, the, two, uh, the two major seasons in the liturgical calendar, as they should be. Um, mm -hmm. they, both, uh, they both celebrate the, uh, the birth of Christ. Uh, in two very different ways, but uh, uh, they do both celebrate uh, the, the birth of Christ the child and in the rebirth of Christ uh, of the Trinity. Anyway, um, interesting readings uh, today. Mm -hmm. a, uh, a powerful colic uh, that, uh, Debbie, Debbie, that Peggy is going to uh, going to recite for us, if you would do yes. that. Yes. And get All right into right business. All right, let's pray here. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 So rich. We've been um, kind of moving back and forth between Jeremiah and, and Isaiah. Um, a couple things that we find in common, uh, we, we find both when, when Isaiah was called and when Jeremiah was called. Um, the reading from Jeremiah this morning um, comes from chapter 17, uh, starting with verse 5 through 8. Um, the um, only a note that I've made after reading this is it's, uh, it's a consideration of choices and uh, uh, and the ramification of the choices we make. Mm -hmm. and, uh, somebody would like to read that for us. Well, and before, this is just kind of an ongoing thing, isn't it? With Jeremiah, He's, yep. you know, the people have just basically, they're just going their own way. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. you know, anyway, mine has the break too at this point where it's, this is the wisdom from God. Before it talks about Judah, Judah's sin and punishment, these people just didn't want to. They didn't want to change. <laughs> no. Does that sound familiar? You no, know? and of course, uh, what was interesting, of course, you know, we talked about this last time. Uh, usually, Isaiah or Jeremiah, if a prophet, you know, brings. Uh, the truth to the people and it's something they just don't want to hear, it makes them double down on their, <laughs> on their beliefs, right? And on their opinions. And so it's just like, if you, you tell somebody, uh, they have an impoverished nature, uh, for instance, uh, out, out, of that, uh, out of that prayer, uh, they don't want to hear that, right? And that's accusatory. Mm -hmm. And so they say, no, mm -hmm. I'm living the way I should be living. It's my right to decide how I live and I'm going to go my own way. And uh, mm -hmm. it was the role of the prophet to try to get back on track. But the more the, it seemed like the more the truth was told, the more people, you know, covered their ears and closed their eyes. Jeremiah exactly. became a real became a real pain in the tail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. And of course, these it's not just the people, these prophets are also speaking truth to power, right? So they're they're accusing the religious the religious establishment of that day, uh, you know, with all kinds of heresies and you know, with a uh, lack of trust in God, which we see in this particular passage. 
Uh, mm. and yeah, and it's not it's not pleasant to hear. <laughs> they don't want to hear it. So. Well, and, and it's the real, you know, true meaning of fear of the Lord. You know, he wanted to be right before God because he's telling the, I mean, I just was thinking of this. He's telling these people all the things that are going to happen to them if they don't change their ways. Yeah. So he knows God's, God means it. And, you know, it, it, it is, I don't mean fear. And so it, it's more the, the true awe and respect of who this person is. The, the creator of the world is saying, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. You've seen it happen before. You know, you, you've seen my power. And, and, you know, Jeremiah and Isaiah and all of them, they, they stuck to the truth because they know who was giving them the, the, the message. And it's like, hey, I, I'm not going against this guy. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, yeah. You know. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Exactly. Just, so, so it's like, yeah. can you people listen to me? But that's why I like that transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of mm -hmm. your grace. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, and that's, that's the thing is that God, uh, you know, God's first job and the prophet's first job is to convince people that they have a problem. <laughs> and people will say, well, no, I don't have a problem. You know, this is fine. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing okay. Things are going along well. I'm a pretty nice person. You know, I'll get into heaven. I'm, you know, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And, and no, the prophet's saying, no, you really do have a problem. <laughs> you have an impoverished spirit. You need to change your ways. You need to look to God. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not what they want to hear. So, so okay. Here's, here's what the Lord's going to say. Okay. Lord's mistake. <laughs> okay. Okay. From Jeremiah chapter 17. Thus says the Lord, cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness and uh, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart, to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. Hmm. I, I was going to say, I, I think it's interesting. Uh, I just noticed here that when I was reading over this again this morning, that in verse five, it's cursed are those who trust in mere mortals. And yes. then down and down and down in verse seven, it's blessed yes. are those who trust in the Lord. So rather than in mere mortals, but whose mm -hmm. trust is the Lord. I thought that was interesting, trusting in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. So it's not just in, the, it, it's a person. Yeah, it's not, the, trust, not is. Just the trust in the Lord. That, yeah, mm -hmm. and then yeah. it's, it's, it's uh, sometimes put that way in the Psalms too. You'll, you'll, mm -hmm. you'll see it. Mm -hmm. uh, so trust, trust the Lord, is trust. the Lord. Yeah. That's I trust. Mean, yeah, I mean, that, that connects it even more closely by saying it that way, right? Mm -hmm. that so you, it's a person. Trust is a person. Yeah. 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 Uh, wow. Um, yeah. Because it's, that's a strong, it's not a person, it's God. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's got all strength, mm -hmm. all yeah. ability, all knowledge. It knows which way to go, which ways not, not to go. Yeah. Yeah, we can... We can really trust that. That's something we can trust because yeah. it sees beyond what we can see. Mm -hmm. You know, all yeah. the other mortals, they don't see any better than we do. Even, you know, my guess prophets do because God talks to prophets, but, you know, they're still mortals. But, well, uh, and, yeah. and, he's, and he's also up here in five, that's cursed are those who trust in mere mortals. Oops, sorry, folks, sorry, I didn't mm -hmm. turn this off. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I, the title of this whole section is wisdom from, from the Lord. So the Lord's talking about all these things. And then he gets down into verse 10 and he says, I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart 
to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. And, you know, this is just a real powerful section, I think. Uh, it is. And of course, he starts out with, uh, you know, misplaced trust, right? Uh, what, you know, where we misplace our trust. First of all, those who trust in mere morals. And of course, we mm -hmm. have a tendency to do that, right? And there are other passages throughout the Bible, you know, one psalm in particular talks about not putting your, you know, trust in the princes and rulers and so on, mm -hmm. uh, but instead putting your trust in God. But we do that. We place a lot of trust in, um, you know, in, in others. Uh, sometimes it's a uh, well-placed trust and sometimes not so much, but our true trust should be in God because, I mean, every person is fallible, right? And mm -hmm. every yeah. person sees the whole picture. And then the other place, of course, make mere flesh their strength. So, you know, we look, we look upon our own bodies and our own minds and our own abilities, uh, you know, to carry the day. And ultimately, that's just not going to happen. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. there are things we no, we're not do, good enough but we certainly we don't know we certainly can't save ourselves uh, but, and, if, mm -hmm. and when we do these things then what happens is our hearts turn away from the lord right there yeah we try yeah, to, we, yeah we start to rely mm -hmm. on ourselves and not, right and not on god mm -hmm. right um, and, and, yeah I, I we might see just... our successes as proof that we have power but we don't see our successes as gifts from god that our power, you know, any power we have is coming from God. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, and that's I, why God, that's why God, <laughs> he's guiding us, make sure we all experience a few failures in life. <laughs> to make mm -hmm. sure that, yeah, because, yeah. you know, you know, it helps bring us around, right? You know, Wake up. sticking to this thing about trust you in seven, my, my translation is, but blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made yeah. the Lord their hope and confidence. So not only is it tr trust is the Lord, as, as our translation here says, but mine says these people, have they have made the Lord their hope and confidence. Mm -hmm. That's that's yeah. that's what it is. It's you a know? choice. It's a choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. to think that, that the Lord's going to test the mind and search our heart. You know, there's a proverb. I'm trying to think. I looked it up the other day and I can't remember which one it was. But it talks about God using almost like a, a spotlight, searching our heart, you know, searching our very being, you know, kind of going inside of us, right. searching this with a spotlight. And and that's, thinking, yeah. And that's what, the, that's what the Holy Spirit does. Right. So, yeah, everything. Yeah. It's all it's all brought to light. Of course, the heart is devious above all else. It is mm -hmm. perverse. So, you know, we uh, through through our deviousness, we uh, often delude ourselves. You know, we delude others. Um, mm -hmm. And you know it's easy to do. Now he goes into me he go goes into metaphor in uh, in the middle sections. You know, it's which a, is so cool. You like yes. like a tree planted by water, setting out roots by the stream. It shall not fear when he comes. Okay, so there are going to be there are going to be hard times. There are going to be hardships, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but there's, there's no fear there for those who trust the Lord. In the year of drought, it is not anxious. I guess that's, you know, even though it's metaphor in this case, it's kind of particular to us, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're in a drought and people are pretty anxious. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, uh, and then, and then of course, he starts to talk about the, the, uh, the deviousness of the heart. In the, in the, at the, at the bottom, he says, um, I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruits of their doings. That is, a you know that is an old testament right um, works righteousness right he's looking he's looking at what you do and and mm -hmm. your ways now you could also say what you do and your way you know and and your ways are an indication of how much you trust the lord right how how close are you to god it's, it's an indication of that but it does appear to be more of a works righteousness than a um, you know than a faith righteousness well, if you could say if it's all based on trust, if it's all grounded on trust, then I guess it would be a faith righteousness. It would have to be faith to us for us because we know that we are going to be called to a, account. You know, Jesus has freed us from this, but we still are going to be called to account. And, and then, you know, I, this is how I see it. And then after we have been called to account, you know, there's going to be, um, we're going to get either stars in our crown or 
you know, that we give back to Jesus or, you know, so, so there's going to be, we, we need to live according to God's ways, yeah. not, you know, to give all according to their ways. If we have put God, the Lord is the trust. If we have made him the trust, trusted him, and then uh, according to the fruits of their doings. I, my Bible also makes a note back up here in verse eight and nine with, with this tree that not only will you bear fruit, but you will have some to share. So there'll be some mm -hmm. left over to give to other people. Yeah. And I think that's such a cool thought. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That, that's the love that, yeah. It does not cease that's, to bear yeah. fruit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's that's showing love. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I think um, I think we get the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Are you ready, Doug? Are you ready to move yeah, on? I think we're. I think Doug's ready to move on to the song. What's he got? Moving he on. Got a stopwatch this morning or something? He must <laughs> yeah. be going somewhere. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Doug's wow. got to keep. Just, long, Doug's got to keep us on track. I know. Long, that's okay, Doug. It's just a cool passage. Was, uh, I can always, I can always turn you off, you know. <laughs> At least <laughs> turn me Bester. off. Yes, <laughs> sir. No, you wouldn't do along, that. Along those same lines, um, uh, the, uh, the two notes that I made for uh, concerning the Psalms, Psalms one, by the way, uh, the beginning of the uh, of the book uh, again uh, he, he evolved choices and uh, pretty much the same line along uh, what, what Jeremiah was saying. Uh, the first psalm recorded in the book of Psalms is, is anonymous. Um, 73 of the 150 books, 73 were attributed to David. Um, although in the New Testament, two of the anonymous psalms, psalms uh, were again uh, referred to David, and if that's the case, he wrote just especially half of them. Uh, the, uh, the oldest psalm was uh, attributed to uh, Moses. Uh, he is uh, authoring a one psalm. The earlier, the latest psalm was attributed to Ethan, who uh, uh, probably wrote that psalm uh, after the return to uh, Judah from Babylonia. So it runs almost a thousand years uh, between the, the oldest and, uh, and the newest, um, which is, which is, you know, it's interesting. Um, I don't know what difference it makes, but it is, it is interesting. So, it's good uh, isms. <laughs> yeah, well, it is what it is. <laughs> I just got a blip. I just got a blip from Karen who said George yes. is out of surgery and he's doing great. So yes. that's just a quick blip. Okay. Yeah. Just to let you know. Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay. So let me read the psalm. Let me yeah. read the psalm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, psalm I'm, one and the whole thing. Yeah, the very beginning, and it's not real long. I'm not going to sing it. I'm just going to read it. Okay. Okay. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he will be like a tree, firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so. But they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Now, that's my translation from this old uh, Bible. It's close. It's, not, it's, it's, it's amazing how, how much that... that uh, uh, echoes what Jeremiah wrote. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Right down to the plants. Yeah. It, well, it makes you yeah, wonder too, was this water. psalm written, I mean, Jeremiah was probably, we don't know, was probably before 
this psalm was written, maybe. Right? I mean, I'm just I guessing. Know. Wasn't this written by Moses? No, no. no. Did it say that Moses wrote the early psalm uh, started? No, oh, no. Okay. Moses, Moses uh, the earliest psalm chronologically. Oh. Per year. Yeah. This, uh, uh, we don't really know. Uh, the the author of this particular psalm is listed as anonymous. Uh, oh, uh -huh. there are 50, 50, 51 psalms in, in in the book of Psalms that are uh, attributed to a, anonymous. Uh -huh. so, this is one of them, mm -hmm. and, and it's, um, as far as as far as um, you know, most of the psalms were, were, were probably written in the in the in the David Solomon area era, which uh, predates uh, Jeremiah by almost 500 years. Mm -hmm. Ah. Yeah. yeah. And you, see in this, is, you, you know, you see in this as well as uh, Jeremiah, and of course we're gonna we're gonna see it uh, very much so in in Luke, but. Um, uh, the blessings and woes, right? Beatitudes and woes. Or if Psalm one is uh, starts with a beatitude, happy mm -hmm. could also mm -hmm. be read as blessed. Mm -hmm. um, are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked? So what these passages are showing is a great division between peoples, right? Mm -hmm. There are those who trust in the Lord and those who don't, right? Those who are with, those who are with mm -hmm. God and those who aren't. There are choices. The they're the wicked. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you see that very prominently in these passages. You know, even like, mm -hmm. for instance, in, in Jeremiah in 5, it says, cursed are those who trust in their mortals. You know, uh, mm -hmm. and it talks mm -hmm. about, you know, they should be like a trouble in the desert. That's, that's a woe, you know, mm -hmm. just, like, uh, just like we'll see in, uh, in the gospel. Another, another point here, uh, uh, Jeremiah would have been unaware of the Psalms. They were lost yeah. at that point, and um, they, they were lost until uh, they started to rebuild the temple. And uh, Ethan, I think it was that, that discovered the uh, discovered the scrolls that were back somewhere in the midst of the temple. So Jer Jeremiah would not have had the psalms available. So, uh, wow! Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay. oh, I was just going to say, you know, it's amazing that Proverbs is not referenced more because Proverbs is all about the wise and the foolish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, it's got and a lot choices. of good lessons. It does. Pithy, pithy lessons. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, I was just thinking it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's a, like we, we were saying, the righteous and the and the unrighteous or the wicked yeah this yeah we never have proverbs proverbs doesn't occur in our readings and i think doug did you explain it sometime or was it paul that explained why uh my mm -hmm. yeah, proverbs doesn't uh it's, there's there's several books of the bible that are uh, that are ignored if you will but having said that when we get to the beatitudes um uh, it, it, Beatitudes is, is essentially uh, uh, New Testament Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in a way, so, in a way, all these readings today are the same kind of thing. The comparison, you know. Yeah. 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 Those are the. I mean, the two books of wisdom literature, Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Right. I think occasionally we might get Ecclesiastes in our readings. Um, you know, that the beginning passage about all his vanity. Um, yeah. But other, yeah, than, that, other than that, you, you know, you don't hear much about it. And we don't get lamentations usually. Uh -uh. No. But no. it would be a lot of fun if we did. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> Is that a good title for that book, <laughs> Lamentations? <laughs> Yeah, it pretty know. much is. Yeah, uh, I'm in it right now. I, I think I told you guys I started. I haven't done it in years. I've been reading through the Bible, you know, on a little planned thing, and it's in Lamentations. All I can say is in in the part of Exodus too, 
his God is certainly a very orderly God, and he really wants things done a certain way. He has it set up, and it's just it just strikes me as I'm reading this, you know. What, yeah. Well, you had, you know, you had uh, 600,000 people uh, roaming around the desert. You needed some order. So, uh, and then, <laughs> and then of course, yeah. when they, when they, when they crossed into the promised land, they, they still needed a, a, an awful lot of order to build their society. Well, yeah. and so do we. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, children need that. Children yes. need, that. they need to feel secure and those sidewalls they need, they need to know where the boundaries are yes yeah. don't we don't we yes. yeah we do <laughs> and we find them out i mean by making mistakes a lot of times and those and that hurts well kids it's in particular that you know when they're growing up they're always pushing the boundaries to see where the boundary is yeah. right yeah 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 <laughs> they want to think it's electric where they want to put it. electric <laughs> fences are good for that <laughs> establishing boundaries yeah, exactly. It doesn't true. really damage you, but it shocks you. Yeah. <laughs> it makes an impression. Yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> okay. The okay. Uh, the second reading uh ascribed for next Sunday. Uh we're still um we're still in, in Paul's first recorded letter letter to the Corinthians. Uh and we're going down that chapter and verse. Uh we uh we uh, took a look at chapter 12, at chapter 13, at chapter 14, and now we're in chapter 15. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Paul is kind of laying it down uh, uh, very, uh, uh, very structure-wise to the Corinthians as to why they believe what they believe. And uh, uh, in today's reading, or Sunday's reading, we get into the uh, resurrection of the dead, which... Uh, um, something that uh, most people want to veer away from you know um we, we've had quite a dose of of the walking dead here the last uh, several years uh, and i can see if that is what the walking dead are i want to stay away from them too but anyway um back to reality uh could somebody read that section from Corinthians. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead. Okay. Which uh, verse does it start with? 12. Fifth, uh, chapter 15, chapter 15 verse 12. Verse 12. 12 and, and I'll read it since it's short. <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there's no resurrection of the dead? If there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and our faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hope, hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. And I wrote, hooray! <laughs> yeah. Kind yeah, of a riddle. Makes a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a riddle, so but you know, this... Yeah, this is really... This passage, this passage uh, 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 emphasizes why Christians are Christians. Just, I mean, if mm -hmm. if Christ was not resurrected, uh, there would no be, there would not be a uh, a Christ, a, a religion of Christ, Christianity. Mm -hmm. It just would not exist. Um, yeah. Well, if, it'd be no better than any of the other religions that preach good works and you know those kinds of you know good yeah. living. Uh, for the sake of life here now. Uh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. good, Diane. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. just yeah. really see, I, I don't see it being needing to be pitied, though. I mean, if, you know, people don't believe in everlasting, that still following what Jesus taught is helpful. I mean, 
I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, just, well, I don't know. You know, he, tries, he, he really brings it to a point. He's, he's speaking to Greeks, first of all, and he, he engages in a very logical progression, one thing leading to mm-hmm. another. You know, if we, you know, if we don't believe that the dead can be raised and how could Christ be, you know, uh, how could Christ be uh, uh, raised, you know, if there's no resurrection and Christ hasn't been raised and so on and so forth. And he just kind of goes right down the line. He brings it to a point in 19, I mean, where he says, if for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. And I, I understand he's trying, you know, he's trying to really strongly stress the point, but I agree. I mean, if this is all about, uh, you know, living a good moral life uh, or, you know, we're, you know, we're following the good moral admonitions of, of Jesus, um, it's not enough. It's just not mm-hmm. enough. It's not enough for me. I yeah. mean, you know, there, there's a lot of good, you know, moral advice out there. And, um, and but if it doesn't save you, well, the What's problem the is with, with the others, I, as I see it, any uh-huh. other teachings, there's no hope. Yeah, there's no hope. There's lack hope, of hope. hope is, this is what we, we are, our whole faith is on, is in hope. Yeah. We, we trust, mm-hmm. we trust God and, and there's hope in this. And that, to me, I, I will just say this. I think in any Bible, this section needs to be at least double spaced. It is so mm-hmm. packed. It is. Trying to read it mm-hmm. and make sense of it. It, 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 it's just to have it single spaced. It's too crowded. There's too much mm-hmm. in there. Yeah, you know, there open is, it up yeah. a little. It, this is packed. And let me. I mean, I just just been just based on what we were saying. Just out of one of my commentaries, they. Uh, okay. I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but they said, uh, you know, Christianity is not a system of good advice. It is right. impossible right so it is the good news that you are mm-hmm. saved that you have that you know that you have uh, uh mm-hmm. hope of, of mm-hmm. the resurrection um now the greeks believed uh in the immortality of the soul but not a physical resurrection some of them some of them i think didn't believe in the immortality of the soul even you know it was mm-hmm. but but at uh but by and large, they did, but they didn't believe in a physical re- resurrection. Paul is talking about a physical resurrection, right? He's talking about yeah. a resurrection of the body. Jesus' body was raised. Mm-hmm. Our body is going to be raised. Okay, it's going to be yeah. a perspective body. It's not exactly, you know, what we know. Um, of course, some people may be disappointed in that, you know. <laughs> what, again, the same old body? <laughs> we know what it means to be recognizable. Yeah, it's recognizable. Yeah, that's right. what it means to me. It means that we will be able to see our people again. Yeah, you know the people right. we love. It's it's so futile to think that once they die, they're gone, and and it just feels what a letdown. You know, I mean, the big part of love is that you can be be with each other again, mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. trust that God was really making that happen. So it just yeah. makes life only- less sad. It's not only seeing our people, but we're going to see Jesus. That's yeah. what we're going to see. And, well, yeah. you know, it's like on the road to Emmaus, you know, when they recognized him, uh, that, that story always touches me, you know, that they, uh-huh. they were walking along with him. And then all of a sudden, in the breaking of the bread, he, you know, they recognized him and then he was gone. But, but they had to know who he was. I mean, his resurrected body was recognizable. So, yeah. you know, I just... Uh, my, my translation talks about just one thing in the study notes, as you said, it says the bodily resurrection of Christ is the center of the Christian faith. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's what we, you know, because Christ rose from the dead, as he promised, we know that what he said is true and that he is God. The resurrection reaffirms the truthfulness of Jesus' life and words. And I think that's just powerful. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's no, a very powerful passage. Just to mention just a, just a couple other things. Uh, in 15 says, we are even found to be misrepresenting God, mm-hmm. not just Jesus, because mm-hmm. we testify of God that he raised Christ. And this is kind of, you know, th- this is kind of an important point. I mean, when we talk about it, you know, when we talk about it in, uh, uh, in our creeds and, and so forth, we say Jesus was raised. He didn't raise himself. We always say Jesus was yeah. raised from the dead, right? So mm-hmm. this is God in action. And to say that God isn't taking this action is to be 
you know, misrepresenting God. Mm -hmm. um, in 20, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits uh, of those who have died. And so he's, you know, he is the, he is the first fruits of a true resurrection. Now, there were other people who, uh, who were raised from the dead before Jesus. In fact, Jesus raised a few of them, right? Uh, but Jesus was the very first person to have uh, been raised from the dead who was not going to die again, right? So he Well, had, and he had a resurrected body. And he had a resurrected the body. The others, like when Raz Lazarus was raised from the dead, he didn't have a resurrected body. Well, he had the he same was, body, I presume. He had the same yeah. body. And even those that were raised when something happened, I don't know, when Jesus did something and others were raised, they were recognizable. Yeah, they, oh, they yeah. Were, no, they were, oh, certainly, certainly. But it wasn't a resurrected body. It was just their body. Yeah. They were. Well, he had his scars. What do you mean he's resurrected body? Well, uh, well how is that different? I don't know. Yeah, but know. Well, generally, what the way it's it's put is that it's a it's a perfected body, right? You are mm -hmm. you are recognizable, um, but uh, but you're you know you're completely free from disease. You're you know you're completely perfected there is no yeah. you know there is no pain associated with your body and so on um and even you know when after jesus was raised i mean there were a number of times when people didn't like really recognize him, right yeah they, you know they didn't you know uh, uh the, the the two people on the road to emmaus um and you know there were other instances too well thomas uh, thomas needed to know and when he saw mm -hmm. the nails nails holes i mean there's going to those had to be there to recognize and confirm the fact that that was Jesus. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But he, so. he wouldn't have healed up in three days from that sword that they stuck in his side. Yeah. He would have still been yeah, bleeding. But again, yeah, he had, uh, he, had a, he had a perfected body. And of course, you also have to realize a lot of it's a matter of perception, what God allows you to perceive. You know, you got, you know God could allow them to, to see Jesus as Jesus or to not see him. And, you know, like the two, two men on the road to Emmaus, they didn't realize it was Jesus until they got into the inn and sat down across from him. And, oh, this is Jesus. Or the, um, the incident of the, uh, you know, the catch of fish, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when they were, when they were right. on the beach after he had been resurrected, they didn't re they didn't recognize him. And all of a sudden they realized they were talking to Jesus. So but the women, a lot, women a thought he was the gardener. What, what God yes. allows you to see. Yeah. right uh -huh. yeah so. well the men all looked alike anyway they all had beards and long hair I mean, there you go so yeah you can't see much of a face when yeah, it's all covered it didn't, up it didn't make that much of a difference. i don't know we'll see we'll see you're too funny well, well yeah we'll look, we'll look back on this conversation and realize how wrong we were but, uh, <laughs> that's okay <laughs> jesus is probably getting a kick out of our discussion yeah it probably is uh, yeah yeah as with Corinthians, um, we are following the, um, uh, Luke's gospel, uh, again, uh, just kind of chapter and verse, and um, we, come to, uh, we come to the Beatitudes. Um, I got to wondering where, 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 where that word came from, because there is no actual Beatitude listed in, in the verses. Uh, it came up with kind of a surprising result. Uh, have any idea where where the word beatitude came from? No. Uh -oh. Thank God for Wikipedia. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Fellow by the name of Marcus Julius Cicero. Oh. Does Cicero mean anything to you? He was a Roman statesman. He was, a, uh, he was a lawyer, a scholar, philosopher, an academic skeptic who just happened to be beheaded by Marcus Anthony on 12743 BC. So, whatever he was, it didn't get him very far in life. Um, he coined the word uh, beatitudo, and it was coined by 
Cicero to describe a state of blessedness. Oh. So it was a, actually a, a, a word that somebody took the trouble to, uh, to coin. And if Webster, Webster had been around at that time, he'd have put it in his dictionary. Um, what else about Cicero? Not much, I don't think. Um, there are two listings of the Beatitudes, and you, know, you mentioned early on, uh, Peggy, uh, uh, the uh, the Beatitudes listed in Luke uh, are called the Beatitudes of the Plain or the Sermons on the Plain. Uh, in Matthew, is the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, Matthew's lists eight separate Beatitudes. Uh, Luke lists four separate Beatitudes, and um, in in for other uh, beware sort of um, uh, uh, statement, if you will. Uh, probably the same sermon, quite possibly done over a period of days. Uh, nobody's really sure, but uh, they do send a message that um, a message of hope and a message of disdain in, in, in Luke's case. Uh, could you read that for us? Well, just, uh -huh. just a sec, I wanna just tell you one other trivial thing about it I noticed. In Matthew, when Jesus starts the, to talk, he sits down mm -hmm. and in and Luke, he stands up. Yeah. So uh, just a little uh -huh. trivia. You know, it's yeah. good. And, and I think that's interesting. This, yeah, he came down with the 12 and stood on a level place. So, but in, okay. in Matthew, he sits down. Yeah. And usually when well, they talk, they did sit down. Yeah, that's true. Uh, on the mount, he might have had the high ground. On right. the plane, he didn't. So maybe he needed right. to, it was a right. flat, it was a flat place. He made and, and like Doug said, it just could have been a continued conversation over the days you know of talking about this you know how it is you start something and and it, you're not just you don't just have one conversation yeah or something. Well, the, the other thing, yeah is that he he was probably frequently uh preaching uh much of the same material in various places as he went along you know the, these yeah. are probably some different of people steps, right so he's you know, he, he, he talks about, and there's, there's a lot of overlap here. It's not, it's not exactly yeah. the same, but there's overlap here yeah. just in the Sermon on the Mount. And he probably spoke about these things in other places too. He Can probably got questions along the way that he tried to, you know, weave in the answers to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, they could have said something to him like, Rabbi, when you said this, you know, the other day or whatever, you know, asking for an explanation, but also this one, even though the one in Matthew talks about this a little bit, how um, people who stand up and uh, will be persecuted. But this one uh, has a blessed are, are you, you who are poor and so forth. And then in 14, after we read it, but it's woe who. So it's again, it's the, the, the righteous and the unrighteous. You know, it's kind of got this. It's, yes, balance. it's again, that, that great yeah. division among mm -hmm. yeah. people that we see. The righteous and the wicked, or whatever. Anyway, yeah. There's another another interesting point here too. Luke says that this is just after he chose the twelve, right mm -hmm. after he chose the the mm -hmm. twelve. Right. Uh -huh. right. Yeah. He he chose he, it. There's there are several different versions of the how how the disciples were chosen, um, and Luke says that um, um, he chose the disciples. Uh, not as he started his ministry, but, but a little after he started his ministry, uh, chosen from disciples that, that kept surrounding him, uh, yeah. as, as, Luke, uh, as Luke pointed out. Um, so he came down with the 12, came down, which means he came, came off of a height, uh, mm -hmm. the 12 and stood on a level place. Um, but it, just another, uh, trivia if you will but but um, if this was the case it was done early in his in early in his ministry and if it was done early in his ministry basically what he was doing was was uh, 
uh, established in the preamble of his ministry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is how it works. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of wisdom. It would gather someone's attention, I think, especially if it contradicted some of the, their Jewish teachings. I don't think the things were contradicted so much. I'm just in general, but I think more of um, explaining them, giving them a different um, interpretation. I don't know. He seemed to me he raised up the humble and the poor and the you know the weak and things that I thought weren't necessarily the way the Jews looked at the world. Oh no, they were supposed to. They were yeah, supposed they were to supposed be, to. But they had care gotten away those. from it. They had gotten yeah. way, way, way away from yeah, that. Yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah, he and of course John the Baptist uh, were reminding them of their responsibilities. Yeah, right. They had finagled even things about divorce. They had they had finagled around so and and also about taking care of their parents. They had you know. Yeah, they developed all these little loopholes and exceptions <laughs> and caveats. Mm -hmm. and, loopholes. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's kind of like and, and, and the thing is, we can't be sitting here self righteously pointing fingers at them because we know we're in the same boat. Of course. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we are. I just want to make yeah. sure. We're, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we'll get we'll get into that. Shall I go ahead and read it? <laughs> yep. Okay. Where does it start? Uh, Luke, uh, Luke chapter six, uh, verse seventeen. Okay. Seventeen through twenty-six. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor. For yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. Lord, Lord, praise to you, Christ. Yeah. Now, if you'd like to hear Luke, uh, Matthew's version, this is very similar. It's, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. For they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the poor of heart. For they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say kind of evil against you because you believe in me. So it's very, very similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Um, I'll just point out a few things. One is uh, the mention of uh, in 17 at the end of that, uh, people coming from the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And these were Gentile areas, uh, predominantly. And so here you see, and uh, you know, very, very early on in Jesus' ministry, the Gentiles getting involved and starting to, uh, you know, and starting to join um, with. Yeah, uh, on on the map today, uh, Tyre would be Lebanon. So uh, it, it it's, it's good you pointed that out, Paul. That's, this is uh, if you take Jerusalem. On the north and Lebanon on the south, you're covering an area of a little over 100 miles. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, folks were coming from a long ways to. Yeah, in those days, yeah, that was a great distance. Yeah, it was a three or four day uh, uh, travel event in some cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and they had to carry their water in, in heavy 
probably pottery type jug. Oh, I guess maybe they had sheep skin or sheep stomachs to carry liquids in. I, I, I think they were probably still working on the leftover wine from the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'd rather but, have but water than is, wine that we are hiking miss, across the desert. We can't miss what it says here. And all in the crowd who were trying to touch him, yes. the power came out of him and healed all of them. And yeah. my commentary mm -hmm. of mine says, you know, there were people who just, they weren't necessarily interested in what Jesus was saying. Yeah. They were interested mm -hmm. in being healed. Yeah. This was the yeah. big, there were, you know, Yeah, and that was a, that, that became a big problem, particularly you know, later on in his ministry, in, in, you know, in 18, it says they had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Now, right. some of them came just to hear him. Some of them mm -hmm. came to hear him and be healed. And some of them just came to be healed. This is my guess. But a whole lot of them probably just came to be healed because they had heard about his miraculous powers. And they talk, when they talk about power came out from him and he, could, mm -hmm. and he healed all of them. So it didn't seem to matter what their disposition was at this point mm -hmm. he was going he was going to heal them and the fact you, you know there was a passage about the woman who was following them and he was you know he was mm -hmm. moving pretty quickly on his way she just touches his cloak he felt the power coming wow. out of her so he could feel it he knew you know he knew he knew his power was was coming out and but my, my and point too happening. is if a hundred miles a four or five day trip if you were going to know that if you could get in to the point where he would heal you there, we know even today, there were people who would walk that if possible or yeah. be carried. Oh, carried. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so yeah. People would go. Maybe, yeah. Would maybe go. they had burst you know, donkeys to ride or something. Yeah. It wouldn't matter at that point, yeah. you know, people, but, but I think, I think it's there too for us, again, as people who are, are could be, I don't know how to say this, since this is a comparison between those who are right with God and those who aren't, you know, if, if being healed physically helps people to become right with God spiritually, amen to that, you know, yeah. that, that's what it's all about, you know, the yeah. real healing. That's, I just read that yesterday about the, the fellow in Mark who was on the, the pallet. And the first thing Jesus said to him was, your sins are forgiven. And, yeah. and I thought this man was a Jew. The most important thing to him was that his sins were forgiven. Yeah. Then Jesus healed him. So he got the full package. I don't know. I just been. Well, I think this, you know, this is where this is, of course, where it started, probably for a lot of people. I mean, there were people who probably came just on the basis of you know the, the knowledge or the rumor that he could that he could heal people once they were healed well uh, you know that probably brought them a lot of faith and now they would sit and listen mm -hmm. to what he said and maybe they'd even follow you know the yeah. well, it, and it's tell like everyone the, yeah. it's like the woman you were referring to the syrophoenician woman she had been bleeding for 12 years, 12 years yeah. and, and so mm -hmm. you know she was going to go she just knew if she could just touch him yeah just touch you know mm -hmm. that's how desperate we can be when we are so sick yeah. and tried yeah. everything but, but also she had faith that this would work yes she, she, she believed it she believed she it did. through and through that if she could mm -hmm. just touch his cloak she would be healed and, yeah you know so it's the really the in most cases it's the interaction of faith and jesus power that, right. that, that makes it happen. Um, yeah. As Doug pointed out, kind of some of the, the overlap, talk a little bit about Matthew. In 20, it says, blessed are you who are poor. Matthew uses poor in spirit. Mm -hmm. they, they, they essentially both uh, apply. And of course, Luke is, is, is talking about really the, the same thing. So it's not just material poverty, but also right. spiritual poverty, mm -hmm. or as you had mentioned, uh, Peggy, you know, poverty of our nature. Um, mm -hmm. and that's you know that's depressed such, yeah that, lacking yeah, exactly, faith. yeah yeah that poverty in spirit in in many different ways you could be depressed dejected um mm -hmm. you know you could or you could just be lacking uh spirituality you could be just lacking, lacking awareness and, and yeah, yeah and, and uh, a connection to god is what you're lacking yeah looking uh, to the world to solve your problems yeah right and seeing no hope there 
right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is often the case. Um, right. And I, I like what Peggy's reference about when Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. And then um, because repentance is like the first step of salvation, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we have to be aware of our our sins and then be repentant and have that attitude in order to be blessed and forgiven. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, you know, the healing without repentance. Um, I, I think maybe people that were suffering were repentant because they were they had suffered and we all learn, you know, where do we learn repentance from? You know, we learned mm -hmm. that, you know, it from suffering, I think. You know, that's one reason we have trials and tribulations. Because what other reason is there? God's not, God's a loving God. Just seems to me that, you know, he could save us without repentance, if it, you know, if it wasn't necessary. But um, not that God brings illness upon us. Mm -hmm. I do think it's because the world is, we, we live in a place where we're mortals. Uh -huh. Because yeah, the original we live, yeah, we live in a broken world. sin yeah that's a real profound statement we live in a place because we're mortals uh, it's okay um I, you know when you when you talk about these people class, right so you say blessed are you who are poor blessed are you who are hungry blessed are you who weep now why you know why is it that they're blessed they're blessed because essentially they're downtrodden they're out of options they they are as a group, they are much more likely to look to God, right, for their yeah. salvation. They are there much more likely to turn to God because they've lost hope in yeah. everything else, right? As opposed now to they the turn people, to God. Yeah, as opposed to the people in the second, you know, the, the lower section from 24 on, you know, those are the people who are, are complacent, right? They're much less likely to turn mm -hmm. to God. And so therefore they're not, they're not blessed, right? And yeah. Now, I look at right. some of them, and it's kind of interesting. If you can't take these things completely literally, I would say it's it's talking, this is, woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. You know, 25, for instance, woe to you who are full now, for you will, you, know, you will be hungry. Well, if you look at us modern Americans, we're all pretty full. I mean, you know, when that, that stuff, are, there, there aren't very many rats. Americans who have a big mm -hmm. problem with finding enough food to eat. And I, yeah, but I, no. Paul, I don't think we're talking about food here. Do you? No, think no, we're not. Know? That's why I'm saying this is, Hunger is this spiritual. Is, yeah. So we're talking about, well, yeah, there's that, that. Yeah. But they're, they're not, these people are not even full. <laughs> they're not even full spiritually. Right. So, and what are you who are laughing now? Well, of course, you know, we may be, we may be laughing. What this is kind of, this is a kind of a, a broad brush statement of those who are greatly advantaged who have advantages and are kind of take things for granted and aren't mm -hmm. disposed to turning to God because they have all these advantages. It's not, yeah, it's not talking about, it's not saying, oh, you know, you can't eat a good meal. <laughs> yeah. You can't, food, can't go right? to Hawaii. It's just, it's just talking yeah. generally about, <laughs> yeah, it's just talking about generally about those who are rich, those who have, you know, so many advantages. You know, Jesus talks about, you know, wealth, um, you know, it's it, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man in the kingdom of God. Well, these are these are these are spiritual. These things are spiritual disadvantages, is what he's saying, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you're spiritually disadvantaged because you're less likely to have God. You're more likely to be relying on yourself and others and your wealth and everything else that is yeah. worldly rather than reaching to God. You're, and I think maybe less likely to love other people because yeah. it seems like you know you might disdain certain people for not achieving or you know, i don't know just seems like yeah. there's other things are going to trip you up the psychologists have actually done studies on this that the uh, the wealthier you become the more empathy you lose you become less and less empathetic and mm -hmm. which i find really interesting um yeah i, I think it's true well, I want to say, too, that if we go back up 20 through 22 and then look at 23, what's the first thing oh, yeah, I to that back Jesus is saying? Yeah, is, you know, they, they, they hope. We talked about the word hope earlier. These people, yeah. there's this right here is their hope. 
the people that have low, they, they feel like they don't need hope. You know, they're rich, you know, they're full, they're, they're partying, you know, they, they, people speak well of them. Oh, what, what is there? You yeah, know? They like the status quo. They like right. the way things are. Yeah. But there's no hope there. There's no, no because mm -hmm. they feel like, well, what, I've got everything. I, you know, I'm good. What's, what's, they don't what's have a problem? need for hope. Yeah. So, so yeah. hope. But, but well, what hope, happens? I mean, they're, they're going to die. They got blinders yes. on. They're going to die. They're not even they're looking at that. You know, no, people. It doesn't times, matter, I guess. We're, we're seeing that now. People aren't looking at, you know, we're a world without hope. Yeah. 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 But I do, I do love that 22 and 23. And of course, these are really unpleasant things to have to go through, right? Yes. Blessed are you when people hate you <laughs> and yeah. exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account on of account. Yeah. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. And so, and of course, mm -hmm. all the, you know, the disciples who became apostles, and then of course, the apostle Paul and so on. You know, they're all people who could rejoice uh, because they, they they surely were hated uh, and persecuted. And, yeah. uh, and then, of course, he, you know, he calls back to the days of the prophets, you know, for that is what <laughs> their ancestors did the prophets. But you notice that there's two yeah. different kinds of prophets. Yeah. Up, up here, you know, in 23. The false prophets and then. Well, 23, they're, they're the prophets. They're the, this is what they did to the prophets, to the true prophets, but to the, but to the false prophets. They, they will speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. You know, they'll speak well of you. You're, not, yeah. you're good. Yeah. yeah. So, what, yeah, what to do you want to speak Well, yeah. And of course, we saw that particularly in, uh, you know, uh, Jeremiah, where you had prophets who were telling people what they wanted to hear, that everything was going to be okay. Don't worry about it. You're not going into exile for 70 years. You're, yeah, you're not know. going into exile, or you're coming out of exile really soon, or, you know, whatever. <laughs> It, it was just it was just whatever you know they wanted to hear at the moment would so. it be fair would it be fair to call our modern day political um, political leaders prophets false prophets false prophets yeah <laughs> there's a lot not going there doug a, going there. They're, <laughs> they're just they're all humans right they're just they're all very they're humans. Humans. Just mm. like all of us. I mean, right. I got some prophecy from a homeless man one time who was a schizophrenic, I think. And he gave me some wise advice. And it was all in my interpretation of what he had said. And I think that, you know, God gives us interpretations and insights. And, and um, what season are we in? Oh, epiphany. epiphany. Yeah. He gives us epiphanies. That's about it. In so. different ways. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we pretty well covered the uh, I think we did. Covered, covered the issue, if you will. Um, well, uh, we'll 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 see how the sermon goes uh, this Sunday. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they normally follow the lessons to one degree or another, which I think is is a proper way to uh, form a homily. Um, in between now and then, enjoy the wind. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's oh, making me sneeze. Yeah, oh. yeah. yeah something's making me sneeze. Pray for rain. Maybe yeah. it's my cats. Uh, pray yeah, for maybe. rain. That's, yes, that's pray for rain and, rain and snow. Rain. Yeah. He needs and to snow for the summer to have water. Yeah. yeah. Please, Lord. Mm -hmm. Please In help your us. Mercy. In your yeah. mercy, hear our prayers. Yeah. Our short-term yeah. vision is fearing that we might not have enough water. Yeah. Well, the maybe... other the other part of that is that uh, uh, the five warmest summers in uh, California history have taken place in the last eight years. Uh, so mm -hmm. you can you can pretty much depend upon a hot summer along with uh, no rain. So, yeah. yeah, I thought it was more like ten, but there was one that was like ten years ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just it's forever. Yeah. Well, I, I've 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 seen it hit 122 twice in my lifetime, and uh, both instances were several years ago. Um, I was right here. Yeah, yeah. I was when the last one hit. It was in I, 1980s, I think. I was. Yeah, it was to make, about 1980. Trying to make 
tried to make she, a living milking cows and I lost nine cows that day. Yeah, wow. I remember that. Wow, wow. Wow. Chico Everyone. was only 119 and it was 124 in Red Bluff. Something like that. Bill was in Red Bluff. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that, that's yeah, right. I was in Chico. Yeah, he was driving through Red Bluff in his Volkswagen in the middle of the day with no air oh. conditioning. Oh, no, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Having driven that make of car, yes. <gasps> oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. with the wind drives you out even more. You know, you're, you're basically fried. Uh, well, no, Deha just dehydrated. Yeah. Well, in the Lord's Prayer, we ask that His will be done on earth that it is in heaven. Uh, yeah. We need to emphasize that. Yes, yeah, uh, our, our our spiritual food, our lessons that we need to learn. Mm -hmm. And can we close with the Lord's Prayer? Mm -hmm. Can. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you all. Bye, guys. Thank you, everyone. Have, have a great week. Yeah, you too, guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Be safe. Yes. Stay for me. <laughs>